Hello guys and welcome to Program Arrest. Today we will talk about dependency injection. The first time that I heard about dependency injection, I didn't understand what's the big deal about it. It seemed to me like another thing that makes life more complicated and makes things less understandable and simply a necessary thing. So today I will try to convince you I was wrong. Now, before we see what it is, let's look at why it was introduced into the programming world in the first place. Let's imagine we're developing some kind of logic that downloads images, applies some kind of effect on them and shows them to the user. For the sake of keeping things easy, we'll do all the things synchronously. Back to the code. So we'll have some kind of service or functionality that is responsible for downloading the image itself. So let's write it. Export function download picture and it will receive a URL and will return a picture. And what it will do, it will create a picture with the URL and some pixels. So this is very, very interesting. Sorry, I have a typo. This is very, very interesting picture. It shows pixels as a stream, yeah. So bear with me. So let's of course uh, create the picture itself and it will have a constructor with a public URL which is a string and the pixels themselves which will be in our case also a string and let's make it also public. And of course, I wrote here download picture instead of picture. Yeah, so this is the code that downloads the picture itself. Now let's write the thingy that shows the picture to the world. Yeah, so this will be another function show picture and it receives a picture. And what it does, it logs out the picture.pixels. Okay, this is what it does, it shows content of the picture, the pixels themselves, to the world. And finally, let's now implement the logic that connects all the things together. Yes, so once again, we'll have a function which we'll call download, download and show, which receives a URL and returns nothing. So what we will do, we'll create picture will actually download the picture download picture with the URL this is the first thing that we're gonna do then we're gonna apply some kind of effect and in our case we'll make the pixels be uppercase and then we're gonna show our picture Okay, so this is our code, basically. I know it's not a real picture, yeah, but for the sake of the example, it's fine. So this is our code, this is the code that downloads the picture, this is the code that shows the picture, and this is the code that first downloads the picture, applies some effects, and then shows the picture to the user. This is how we would implement this code a few years back. So what is so bad about this code? It seems to me that it is very simple, very straightforward, and you clearly see what happens here. So why, why doesn't, what, what smells here? Yeah, what's so bad with this kind of code? The two things that I want to pinpoint here that are very, very, very important here are one, single responsibility principle, two, testability. Let's start with single responsibility. What it basically means is that a piece of code, it can be a function or a class or whatever you want, it should have only one single responsibility, meaning it should have only one reason to change. But why? Why? Well, I like to think about it as a shelf. If you have a shelf only for books and you are looking for a book, you will know exactly where to find it. Also, if you have another book, you will also know where to put it and how to put it exactly there because the shelf is only for books but if 
At one point, you will receive some kind of letter and you will put the same letter on the same shelf with the books. Sooner or later, what will basically happen is this shelf will become not only bookshelf, but also letter shelf. So you will have both books and letters on the same shelf. And after a while, you will receive some kind of small gift, you will find some kind of small thing and you will not know where to put it and you will look inside your house, you will look at the shelf and you will say, oh, I have books, I have letters, I will put this small thing also over there. And once you do it, you will continue doing this again and again and again and this shelf, which was in the first place a shelf for books only, will well, it will become a big pile of mess. This thing that I described happens because of the broken windows effect. And what it means is that if you're passing a house with some broken windows, it will hurt you not so badly to break another window. But if you're passing through a house that is very, very pretty and all the windows are intact, it will be very, very hard for you. Well, unless you're a stupid guy or a girl, to break another window. So when going back to the code, what it basically means is that when you look at the code, which is messy and has a lot of stuff going on there, it will be much easier for you to put another thing in that messy code, which is not relevant there, instead of when you're looking at a very neatly designed code, which has one single responsibility, it will be much harder for you to explain to yourself why this new piece of code belongs there. In this single function, we have three things that this function is responsible for. It is responsible, of course, for the effect on the picture. This is what we intended it to be responsible for. And we are responsible here about another two things. Responsible about choosing how we download the picture and how we show the picture why, why we are responsible for it, because this download picture and this show picture are specific functions that do specific things. Like for example, this show picture shows the picture by logging the pixels and the download picture function downloads the picture from the internet. Well, it creates a picture inline, but you get the idea. To illustrate this, let's assume we now want to change our logic and to support working offline. What it means is that in some cases when we are offline, we will try to get the image instead of from the server, we will get it from a cache. So let's look at the code. This is our code. So, oh, I see I have a typo here. Yeah. Okay. So when we look at this code, it is quite clearly where to put this single line of code that checks and decides how to download the picture. And this is the line, okay? Here we download the picture. And now what we'll probably do to implement this logic is, well, first of all, we need some kind of function to tell us if we are offline. So let's create it, have access to the internet and it returns a boolean and we will have an access to the internet, okay? So if we have an access to the internet, if we do, then download the picture. Otherwise, okay, get picture from cache. Here. And of course we need this function as well, export function get picture get picture from cache url string return the picture and we'll return a new picture with the url and cached pixels okay and i have a typo here uh, picture i cannot type today sorry picture yeah and get picture from cache yeah okay so this is the new code that checks whether we are online and downloads it from the internet or 
whether we are offline and gets the picture from the cache. So what happened now when we added these lines of code? We added two things to our code, two new responsibilities. The first thing that we added, the first responsibility that we added is deciding how to get the image, whether it should be downloaded or received from a cache. And our code now decides exactly how we check if we can download the image. Okay, in this function, we decide that in order to download the image, all we need to do is have an access to the internet. But maybe this is not the case. Maybe we should have an access to our servers, not the internet, because if we have access to the internet and our servers are down, maybe we cannot get the image. So again, this code download and show is now responsible for two more things, whether to get the image from the cache or downloaded and how to decide whether we can download the image. Okay, it is responsible for it directly because it calls a specific function that is designed specifically on how to do it. Okay, I hope you get the idea. So now let's talk about testing. How would you test this function? Okay, in order to test this function, you will need some kind of method to fake internet access, whether you have it or not, to, to test whether you can download the image and do stuff to it, you will need to spin up a real server to download the image from because you cannot replace this download picture function because it is, because it is a concrete function that this function uses. And you will also need somehow to check the final image that it is displayed because well, show picture is a real function that shows the picture to, I don't know, to the console here, but it can be easily to display. So you will need some kind of method to look at the display and see whether the image is as expected. And all you wanted to do is check this single line of code of the effect. You wanted to check that the effect that happens is correct. So in order to do it, you will need to do a lot of stuff. Okay, so it is very, very hard to test this method. So I hope that by now you understood that we have a problem on our hands. We need to solve this thing and change it somehow. So now let's see how this amazing thing that is called dependency injection solves all these problems. Let us rewrite the code, the function download and show in the following way. Let's create an interface. Let me move it just export interface and I will call it dependencies just because dependencies and what I will have I will have a get picture string picture and show picture which receives a picture and returns nothing okay and what I will receive in download and show instead of just the URL I will receive the dependencies okay and what I will do is simply replace this code by get picture and this code by show picture and yeah and that's it okay this is the only change we need to do to the code to solve all our problems. So before looking at how it solves, let's talk a little bit about why it is called dependency injection. It is very clearly to see from here. This function, our download and show function, has some kind of dependencies. It is dependent on getting the image and showing the image. Okay, so these dependencies, instead of creating them and using the concrete dependencies inside the function, we receive them from outside we're injected, we're getting injected with these dependencies from outside. So this is why it is called dependency injection. So how does it solve our problems? Let's look at the single responsibility principle here. So what happens if we now want to decide how to download the image, where to get it from, either to download from the internet or get it from the cache. This download and show function doesn't decide it. It doesn't even know what it does. Because 
some other code that it is his responsibility to decide how to get the image. This code is now responsible for this logic and our download and show is now simply responsible for applying the, uh, the filter on the picture itself. This code, download and show, it doesn't know how it gets the image and it doesn't know how it shows the image. It is not his responsibility. All it does is it is calling a function which this function download and show doesn't really know what functions are those the get picture and show picture and they can be easily switched and replaced and also to test this function download and show to test that the filter is applied correctly all we need to do is to fake this dependencies uh, parameter that we are getting inside the download and show to fake it to fake the get picture and the show picture and to check that when we're returning some kind of picture from the get, from the fake get picture, the show picture, the fake show picture receives a picture with the filter we're expecting. I really, really, really encourage you to start using this injection, the dependency injection, as soon as you can. You will see that your code will become less coupled and will be much more robust. You have watched an episode about the dependency injection. Let me know what you're thinking about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more videos like this by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more color-related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Programmarist.